So welcome everybody to our Monday session um, or lunchtime session, let's put it that way. So today we're going to be looking at um, uh, uh, how we can build out our email templates. So there's a couple, there's a nice little um, hint that I want to show you guys, or nice little tip that I want to show you guys. And um, it, if we have more time, then uh, what I'll do is just to make up the 20 minutes, I'm going to go through some of the mail preferences. I uh, know we've covered mail before, but um, we didn't get the chance to go into much uh, much detail. So I will go into that as well um, after looking at the mail template. But anyway, let's get to the suing of things. So I'll quickly share my screen. So now open my mail. So um, at the moment, guys, I've I don't want to bore you, bore you guys with how am I, I'm going to type the email out. So what I've got here, I've got um, two emails that I've prepared, right, or that I normally use for my, um, my uh, advanced training session, my support essentials training. So it's an email that I will keep on sending, right? So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, we keep the it's a subject. I'm just going to call it support essentials Cape Town. Okay. And then um, all I do is just save it. Um, and this will, of course, save it as a draft, right? Um, so it will be sitting in my drafts under Digicate Drafts. Right, there it is. Now, what you need to do is you need to put it in a mail folder. So I'll just quickly make a mail, um, another mail folder. So I'll go to um, mailboxes and I'll select new mailbox. And I'll do it under Digicate, right? Because I want to keep it on that one. So I'll just call it templates and okay. <clears throat> Just wait for it. It's taking its own sweet time. Um, but while we're waiting for it, I'm just gonna move it into a different folder for now. So, um, it's, yeah, it should have popped up by now, but anyway. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that um, mail, that draft mail, and I have to drag it into that folder that I've created in my case, I'm just gonna do it in a different folder because it's for some reason it's taking too long to, to um, populate. So now I'm gonna go back into my drafts. This time around, I will just drag that, save mail. I'll put it for now into um, to do goodies, okay? And the reason why you want to put it in a mail folder because inside of mail, you've got this option under um, messages that says send. While it's sitting in drafts, it won't, it will just give you this option send. But now, say for instance, we move that um, save message into a different folder. Then if I select that, I can go to message and it will just come up as send again. Okay, so this is how you can create your own mail message, put it in a folder, call it template or call it whatever you want. And then you can just click on send again. So when, if I want to send that email again, I can just go to messages, send again, and it will come up as a brand new message. And yeah, I can now um, uh, change things if I want to. It will come up as a normal mail message, as you can see, okay? So that's the one way of, of building your templates, right? But you can expand on this. I don't know if you guys um, have ever worked in 10.13 with High Sierra when uh, different um, templates inside of mail where you can send a birthday card or anniversary card and stuff like that. Now you can do the same thing inside of, of mail as well, but um, to construct the mail message, you will maybe use a different application first, like Pages or even Microsoft Word. In my case, I'm gonna go with Pages. So I'll just gonna start a new Pages document. Okay. I'm gonna start a blank one. 
And yeah, I'm gonna quickly do a, a, a blank, a nice little message that I wanna do. I'm gonna do maybe a birthday message. So first of all, I'm just gonna send that and I'm gonna give it a nice little font. Oh, I'm gonna go with that rosewood font. I'm gonna increase it, say to, I'm gonna make it maybe 35. Let me say happy birthday. And now I want to put in a nice image, right, to that, to that message. So I've got a nice me, um, image on my desktop. I'm just going to go to my um, media. In fact, I'm just going to drag it straight from my desktop onto, onto my document. Okay. So guys, one thing you got to keep in mind is that when you want to do a mail message like this, um, your message should be in line with text. You can't make it as a different wrap option. Okay, so um, I'm gonna select the image. And as you know, um, or for those who don't know, now you will know this, um, that your, um, your, the way your inspector tool works, it's uh, content specific. So now if I select the image, the um, um, inspector tool will now focus only on the tools for the image. Now, after selecting the image, I'll go to my arrange tab within my inspector tool and I'll change my text drag from automatic to in line with text. Okay. And I'll, I'll just um, add a paragraph marker just on the end, hit enter, and I'll hit in. I'm in the for Hit enter again, and it's still centered. So I will um, add another little small message in there. And this time around, I'm going to change the font to, I'm going to go with the Bradley hand. And I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Then I'm going to make it 25. I'm just going to say to, uh, our special person okay. and I'm going to highlight that, give it a different color, you know, add some character to it. And yet at the bottom, I'm going to make it a, a little bit smaller again. And I'm going to just say type message here. A reminder for myself, give it a different color as well. Uh, make it maybe a deeper yellow. Make my happy birthday. Let's go with the primary colors. Let me make that blue. Here we go. So now I've got my um, document set out. Now all I do is I will highlight everything, right? And I will go with copy. So I'll copy that, go edit, copy. And I'll start a new mail message. I'm just going to close this one down. New mail message. And I'll go into my mail body and I will go with data place. So there's my, my template that I want to use. Obviously, I don't want my, my signature in it. So I'll just um, clear that out. And now I will just save this like I've done before, right? And that will save into my drafts, my viewer window. So now in my drafts, I just rinse and repeat the same action that I've done before. So there's my drafts. I go, I'm just going to add it to my to do goodies for now and drag that into, into um, my folder or my, my mailbox. <clears throat> the bottom. And now I can click on that mail message at any given time, go to format, sorry, messengers, send again. So any person's birthday comes up, I can just prepare, go into my, my, my template, add in the message and so on and send it again. So guys, what you need to keep in mind is that when you're building a template like this in a document, make sure that you um, use the inline with with image. I think that's one mistake that I've made because when you bring it in, it the, the image jumps all over the show. 
okay, and it doesn't stay in line and sync it like I have it here. Okay, so that is how we can quickly build out templates and I've shown you guys now in 10 minutes how to do that. That's how easy it is. Now, um, let's look a little bit at the male preferences. Okay, that we didn't cover the last time. So, if I go to my male preferences, and guys, these are certain things that we can actually take advantage of. So if I go to my male preferences, and I'll start off with the general tab button. Um, default male reader, now this is now for, for if you have um, another male application like um, um, Thunderbird or even Outlook, and um, you want to set your mail app as your default. Now what this means is if you come to a certain link um, where you have to click on the email link, it will open on the one that's your default. Take about it now, at, at any given point, you can change it around. So I've got Outlook as well. So I can make my default mail application Outlook. At this point, I'm very biased, so I'll keep it on, on mail, okay? There's nothing better than mail, I believe. Now, um, under check new messages, it's automatically, and here you've got the option to change the times. You can make it manually as well if this is, if getting new messages irritates you and you only want to respond to a certain group at a time. You know, you want to do it like the whole um, social, uh, social distancing where you just take groups at a time, then you can go manually and just click on the um, get new message button from time to time to bring in the new ones, okay? Um, if you keep it on automatically, guys, uh, the automatic function will actually work faster if you're on power than if you're on battery. So that's also something you take into consideration. New message sound, you can change your message sounds here, right? And you, you can also play sounds of other male actions. Now, what this means, guys, is, so if you don't want, um, when you're trashing the email, you know, you hear that, that, that rumbling of the paper or that shush sound when, you, when you're sending a message, then you can disable that with that setting. Um, dock and read count, this only shows my inbox if you wanna show anything else, like all of your mailboxes or only certain, um, um, uh, uh, smart mailboxes you can include only or you can only show those ones um, new mail message notification inbox only so um, that now you can set to if you only want to show it for your VIP contacts or for your general contacts only no recipients at all um, or you want to show all mailboxes as well so for now, I'll just keep it under all in inbox. Um, download folder, this is now, say for instance, you're downloading a, a you hit the download button on a attachment, it will go by default to your downloads button. Um, of course, you can change this around to anything else. I do recommend to keep this the same as your Safari browser, right? Um, uh, my Safari browser setting under my Safari preferences is also set to downloads, which is gonna show you guys quickly. So under my general, you will notice that my downloads, okay, I've set to ask each time download, I changed it, but mine is also set to from time to time, I, or generally I set mine to downloads as well. So that is how I put that setting in. Um, remove unedited downloads after, um, after message is deleted, you can say never if you wanna keep it on. Problem is your, your um, sometimes it becomes a little bit disjointed. That's why I keep it after the after messages deleted. It will delete those um, um, downloads as well. Um, archive or delete um, muted muted messages. Um, add invitations to calendar automatically. Um, the setting here, I I I I don't want to keep on because sometimes somebody will send you. I'll see you next week, and now next week is automatically saved to your calendar. I rather want to click on that um, option and choose to say to save it or not. Uh, prefer opening messages in split view when in full screen view, guys. This is pretty interesting. I'm just going to show you what that means. If I go and I um, expand on, or oh, sorry, go into full screen mode in my mail, 
you can see at the moment my setting is set to um, prefer opening message in split view. So if I go full screen mode, now while in full screen mode, if I click on new mail message, you will see automatically that there was split screen. It's something that I don't actually like that very much. Some people prefer, but I, I'm a little bit old school when it comes to that. And I'll show you guys what I normally do. Now, what I do is I would, I would change, I would untick that option. And um, if I'm in full screen, my messages, then my mail message actually um, comes up in the front. And for me, that's just a little bit more emphasis. Now, even if I minimize it, um, it will stay at the bottom there. You will see there at the bottom of my screen, it's there. And for multiple messages, um, it will just create another tab, right? So if I say new message again, you'll see that there's now two tabs under that window. So for me, that's just a better way, but of course, we are all different. So you can choose which option should, suits you. Um, uh, when searching all mailboxes include the results in burn junk, you can include all of those options as well at the bottom. Now under accounts, this refers to all of your, your different accounts, right? Um, so yeah, as, as you can see, I've got my two IMAP accounts, my iCloud, my um, exchange as well as my Google account, which is both IMAP, my iCloud and my Google account. Now, yeah, the only thing I can maybe uh, look at is actually two things. Um, first of all, we spoke about this before, is the send large attachment with mail drop that I do recommend to switch on, right? Which is um, optional for both exchange and IMAP. Um, if you guys didn't check out that video, please look at it, it's in our YouTube channel. Um, the mailbox behaviors is another thing. Now, yeah, you have a choice to, um, if, if your um, server or mailbox supports it, or your mail server supports it, you can have a choice by taking draft mailbox and put it either in the draft in the server or on your machine. Personally, I prefer to keep it on the server. The reason for this is, guys, then I can actually um, get it on my device as well. So you can't see my device, but um, I can also access it on my device. Whereas if I put it on drafts on the Mac, um, the same you can do with your other mailboxes as well, but more emphasis on this as well as um, uh, deleted messages I also keep on the server. Um, just in case you want to Either just double check if that message is the correct one if you delete it from the device as well. Um, that option is also available to you. Um, beyond that, um, junk mail. And now junk mail, um, there's something I wanna quickly um, uh, uh, let you guys know about this one. Junk mail, you can set up on the device or on your computer as I've said it here. I prefer to actually set the junk mail on the server right so in other words um if i sorry first of all if i set it up here then what will happen is is that it will only be on this computer but now keep this in mind if you if you have the same mailbox set up on your phone or on your ipad and it's an imac mailbox um then you can um set it up on that server right so in other words, a quick example, say for instance, I want to set up um, my junk mail folder um, for say my Google, right? Then I would actually go to my browser and go to my Gmail, right? And in my Gmail, I'll go to settings. And in my settings, I would go to mail or folder in the filtering option let me just show you guys so i go to settings um see all settings ah, there we go and i'll go to filters and block addresses and now in there i will i will um set up my 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 junk mail settings and so on um so that is now from from that point the same thing will happen, guys, if I now, I'm just going to go back into my mail preferences. 
Um, the same thing I will do if it comes to my um, rules, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys that in a minute. The other option you do have in the junk mail is this block tab button. Now this is pretty interesting because um, as you can see, I've got a bunch of numbers that has been blocked here now in one of our videos. I think it was the one where um, we, we can um, uh, use a screen time. We were looking at screen time. You can block certain addresses or even block um, 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 contact numbers. Um, it's in the mail video, I just remembered now. Those blocked addresses and, and, and the numbers are sitting in this window here. So you can either choose to move those messages that's coming from this number straight to the bin, or you can just keep it in the inbox, but um, it will come up as, um, as a block as a block mail, right? Now, um, fonts and colors. This is where you can um, uh, change the, 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 the this is cosmetic change, where you can um, make the fonts bigger. Uh, so if I look at my message font, let me go into this one here. So if I go into my message font and I say, I click on select and I increase my my font size, right? Um, then you guys should see the font size increasing. Let's go into. So you can see there at the top, it's 18 now. That's my default font size for my message. Um, the message list font is, of course, the message list here. And if I increase that, of course, it's going to increase my my font size in my message list where you can see that here. So that is something that you can also um, 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 use for if it's if the text is too small. Viewing, there's quite a bit of, of uh, a, a lot of settings in there. I'm just going to change this back to I'm gonna make it 30. So under viewing, um, I've got the list preview where I can change this to you can see it's around two lines. You can change it all the way up to three, four lines. I'm just gonna go four lines, and I can see there's more detail in my my list my list preview. I'm just gonna change it back to two lines. Move discarded messages into bin. You can change it to archive. Now this goes hand in hand. If I say I wanna um, go to archive, this goes hand in hand. If you swipe with your two fingers on your trackpad from right to left, it will say it will go to archive. Alternatively, if you change the preferences setting to burn, it will change it to delete, okay? Um, the, so show message headers, it's default. You can custom it. Um, now display unread messages with bold font. That's right. Load remote content messages. Um, messages, email messages may contain images, content stored in a remote service. Yeah, we want to load that immediately. If you untick that, it doesn't load immediately. Uh, use smart addresses. Um, uh, turn this off when always displaying names and addresses. Okay, so if you uh, turn this off, um, then it will show you the name and the address in the, 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 the uh, message um, address line. Uh, view conversations, this is pretty interesting because here we can um, highlight messages with a color when, when not grouped, right? Include the related uh, messages and this goes hand in hand guys with this here. Um, under the view button, you've got this organized by conversation. Um, we you, you basically put all the messages that's under one subject line under one container. I don't like to actually use it. That's why mine is on tick. I kind of notice that I miss certain messages, but for some that is actually good to keep conversation. So um, these ones goes hand in hand with it. And it says here show most recent message at the top. Okay. So um, the, you can see this one that I've got on tick, mark all messages as read when opening a conversation. You don't want that because some, there might be other messages in the conversation that shows you as 
um, being um, um, an or that you haven't intended to. So if I switch um, organized by conversation, you guys would notice that, let me just go back there. Okay, it's organized by conversation. There are certain messages that's got like three in them and so on. So uh, as you can see, those ones that shows up as blue, they highlight messages with a color when not group. So um, that's the one. And yet it says they show most recent message at the top. As you can see, that's the most recent one. Now, um, I don't like to use that option, but again, that's more settings if you want to use the organization or organized message as conversation. Uh, composing, here you can, uh, by default, I prefer to use the, the um, rich text. You can switch it to plain text if you want to. Um, now, this also goes hand in hand. If, you, if you're in a new message, you don't need to go to the setting to make the change. You can actually just go straight to format and you can say my plain text or my rich text. Okay, so you don't actually need to change the setting in the setting as it's just gonna be your default. Um, check spelling as I type, uh, like you do that. Or other than that, you can make it when click send and it will give you all of the, um, your spelling errors and you first need to fix those. I prefer to as I type, you can switch off a never. This is now if you type in a specific language and so on. Right. Um, automatically CC myself, you can PCC yourself in each mail to tick that on. Um, addressing, when sending a group, show all member addresses. So if you're sending a group of addresses, um, I'm just going to go to you, my contacts. As you can see, I've got different groups here. I've got the family group, I've got the shooting group for DigiCape as well. So if I now should type in DigiCape, Right. Then you will see then all the all the addresses will come up because I've got this when sending a group show all addresses, all member addresses. Okay, alternatively I can turn that off. Okay. So then it will only come up with a digital name. I'm not gonna delete that now, guys, but we we'll get a picture of that one. Now marking addresses not ending with now. This is pretty cool. This year will indicate the color for the addresses that you type in. So in other words, you can see here I've got where it says the at digicat.co.za. So this means if I should go into a new mail message and I type in, um, let me take my, my personal email address. This is my Gmail address and you will see it come up red. But if I should type in my digicat address, it comes up as blue. So this will distinguish um, the blue ones that falls under that same um, uh, um, or ending with that same address. And this is good for, you know, when you're sending emails to um, your colleagues in your company versus to those, to your clients and so on. That's pretty good. Um, send your message from a selected account. You can choose which account. Is. As you can see, I've got my three accounts. I can send it up to um, select whichever one is my default. Um, this is pretty good, and this is what I want to emphasize on the You say message format as original message, uh, whether it's a rich or plain text. The um, quote text of original message, you can see mine is, is on. So when you click on reply, it will include the original quote, increase quote level. Um, when quoting a text, reply replies or forward, check this out, guys. It says here, Include all original text or include selected text if any, if any, otherwise include all text. Now this is where, say for instance, I want to um, respond to, let me go with this uh, a quick, uh, not quick, but let me go with the uh, of Catherine email. So say for instance, I want to respond, but I only want to have that part there, right? So I highlight that and I say reply. You will see that it will only take that portion of that email. Why? Because of the setting here. Okay. So you can highlight certain parts of the email if you hit reply. It will only uh, choose that part there. Now, um, signatures, um, you can 
do exactly the same thing with your signatures as I've done in pages where you can actually build your signatures in pages. But again, guys, if you're using images, use the in line with text image. I'm um, sorry, um, text strap option. Um, rules. You can build your own rules inside of mail. However, again, it's better to build your rule inside of the server um, than to build it in the app because this will only be available in mail. Whereas if you build it in the server, then it will be available on all of your devices. Quick example before, I know we're over our time, but this is my last example. Um, if I go to, to um, let me use my iCloud. If I go to iCloud.com, I'm gonna go into my iCloud mailbox, right? Come on. So I go to mail, then in here, I'll be able now to build my own rule, which then means it's available on my phone as well as my iPad or any device that is connected with a smart box. So I go to my cogwheel at the bottom and the rules, and yeah, I can just build my own rules, add a rule, build it in there, and that will be available on all of my devices. Whereas if I only build it here in mail, preferences, rules, um, it will only be in mail. Same with Gmail, where we were filtering and um, the filtering option in Gmail, that is where we can build our rules as well.